Hey guys, uh, this is Constant from Revolution. Uh, welcome to the Collector's Perspective. Today, I'm very, very happy to invite one of my good friends from the watch world. Uh, this guy is a uh, prolific uh, collector. Uh, he's a brand owner as well, and he's just an all-rounder awesome watch guy. So, nope. thank you for coming. Thanks, bro. Appreciate <laughs> thank it. Thank you for taking the time here to, to, share, to share with us your, your journey and uh, your experiences, and of course, to show us some badass watches. Awesome. Yeah, definitely want to. So, maybe you want to tell our audience a little bit more about you. You know, sure. uh, uh, what industry are you in? And of course, uh, how do you actually started your watch collecting journey? Cool. I've been collecting it 15 years. Um, I mean, IT industry mm -hmm. sort of, you know, stumbled upon it. Everyone around me was was wearing watches back then. It was mm. oversized. So uh, back then, you know, uh, really wanted uh, Panerai back then. The first Panerai mm. was uh, PAM 233. Ah, um, it's crazy man. Started with 80s power reserve. First <laughs> PAM, wow. Yeah. I mean, go big or go, go home, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so after that, you know, uh, stumbled upon uh, AP. Oh, um, yeah. My first AP was coincidentally you know, uh, Bumblebee. All right, awesome. Forged watch. carbon, yeah. ceramic bezel. That was the wow. That was the uh, yeah. that was the thing, man. Uh, never Bumblebee. seen never seen anything like it. I mean, yeah. I went down that rabbit hole. Mm. Um, collected the whole catalog. Went through uh, all the yeah, man. Shows. Back then, APs were cool, man. I, I like really APs were cool. They were doing a lot of things that are not uh, done in the in the industry. Yeah. Fast forward to 2015, uh, the integrated steel sports yep. uh, craze started taking a lot of uh, uh, steam, mm. and then you know um, it just got really hard to get a hold of a brand mm. I, I, I really like. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, good thing is you know you, you find different uh, watches to to enjoy to collect, uh, and you know, a lot of us collectors, I think we've diversified. The love of watches is still there, you see. For sure, fundamentally, yeah. yeah. And I can't help but to. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> show me that watch, man. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> so this is actually your newest acquisition, right? If Absolutely, I'm not, yep. not wrong. Yeah. Yep, yep. So this is actually his uh, Hamajani Tonda PF Skeleton, which is a bloody insane watch. Yeah, so as you know, I'm a big uh, skeleton mm. fan. I, I love open work watches. I love skeletonized watches. Yeah. Um, in terms of finishing, this takes the cake. I yeah, dare I mean, say Hamajani just, you know, whew. hits it out of the park. Oh, going back to uh, um, not being a brand owner, um, it's actually the founder of uh, Wilhelm, right? Yes. So yes. Wilhelm watches uh, um, started in 2015, right? So maybe you want to tell us a little bit of the story of your micro brand. So it's a yeah. it's a personal story. I think mm. um, I, it was around the time my I, my first son uh, was born. Damn, yeah. I didn't know that, man. Yeah. So his name is <laughs> Liam, and and the yeah. brand is named after him. Liam anyway, you do have a daughter, right? Yes. So where is your daughter's brand? Like? <laughs> steady, steady, don't worry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I mean the uh, Liam is short for William, and mm. so hence you know called wow. Wilhelm. Yeah. So it's, cool. it's very personal. It's uh, very dear to my heart, and, and that's why you know every every customer of mine is a friend. Um, oh. You know they 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 know my story. They know uh, uh, why I got into watches, mm -hmm. and you know they have a, a piece of me in a way, lah. Wow, yeah. it's amazing. And a couple of series of Wilhelm watches has been already uh, launched. Yes. Yeah. So we started with the Elemental. So at Elemental. that time, I always draw experiences from uh, the watches I've collected or the what I gravitate mm. towards from a collecting perspective. So the Elemental was really much, very much the play on different materials and uh, complex case constructions. Cool. So that was the first, it was a, it was a uh -huh. hit and it sold out and then um, Telos. The cushion case one yeah. with the... Yeah. Correct. So that was kind of the Elemental, but... Um, uh, changed up to bronze. Then after that, uh, we came up with uh, the prism. It kind of coincided with uh, the steel sports craze. We have uh, two watches here. These are Nope's newest uh, yes. watches. It's, I mean, it's a beautiful watch. The bracelet itself, it's, uh, it's cool, right? I think you have this thing called the, the micro adjustment, like on the fly yes. micro adjustment bracelet. Yep. Right? Yep. And uh, of course, uh, Sapphire case back and a uh, beautiful movement inside, a beautiful column wheel chronograph. Maybe you want to tell me a little bit more yeah. about chronograph. I'm a, a bit of a chronograph geek. I think for me, I'm, I'm always about details and, mm. and the, the chronograph has to be something that I think for, for chronograph geeks, uh, you got to be happy with the, mm. col the column wheel. We went with the <coughs> uh, La Jupere. La Jupere, oh yeah. wow, okay. So it's a Swiss uh, column wheel automatic yep. chronograph. Obviously reliable and um, resilient workhorse kind of uh, yeah. movement. Um, what I really like is the subtle touches of the the chrono pushers and mm. the crown. The details of these uh, watches are in your website, right? Yep. So yep. Um, you can go to a uh, Wilhelm website to take a look at it. I think these watches are amazing. Congratulations, Thanks, man. Thanks, bro. <laughs> this is Appreciate a good one. It. So of course, um, nope. Uh, that's it. 
Uh, of course, Nob is known as uh, one of the most prolific uh, Bulgari Optofinissimo collectors in Singapore, I would say, but uh, maybe towards the world as well. I don't know. Humble. Yeah. <laughs> Humble. <laughs> Today, of course, um, we want to showcase some of your beautiful Bulgari Optofinissimo. Sure. Okay, here we go. The wonderful box of uh, Octos here. So, Nob, do you have the, do the honors? There you go. Boom. Wow, this is... Okay, just to be... Just to be frank, right? These are not all of them, okay. But uh, of course, I told Nook to bring some of his uh, most treasured and most um, special pieces yeah. uh, from the Octo Bagari Octo collection. Uh, all of them means uh, means something to you, and I think that we should, um, of course, give them all, give all of them some attention. Let's start with the uh, the perpetual calendar. Oh. Uh, in platinum over here. Yeah, this is my favorite piece as well. So this is uh, the uh, Bagari Octo Finissimo perpetual calendar in platinum. Yep. And with the blue lacquer down, right? Yes. And this is incidentally one of my favorite. I was really impressed by you know how Bulgari uh, managed to come up with the world's thinnest yeah, um, my, my God, perpetual was calendar. Back then. Yeah, it, yeah, you know it, this had been kind of an elusive um, target for you know a lot of brands like AP basically came up the year before I think uh, with the the, the world's uh, thinnest oh, uh, perpetual the calendar. Right? The RD2, right? Yeah. RD2 exactly and. I think one or two years later, um, GPHG, this watch won, you know, the price. Yeah, my the God, price. yeah. So and then I think they showcased the titanium version, right? Correct, the so they announced the, the platinum and the titanium. Wow. I mean, I, I was kind of torn which one I would get first, mm. whether it be the titanium or this, but I think for me, I'm a sucker for blue. Bro, I think yeah. you made the right choice. I mean, the right. finishing on the case to yeah. me is, is, is really stunning, it's, it's really yeah. beautiful. I was watching, I think it was a time and tide. Uh, watch uh, mm. review about how they made the prototype the the bezel yeah. where it's you know brushed and polished. Um, oh yeah, I saw that as well. Right, you yeah, saw, I that? saw that. It's on the Octo it, Finissimo S, right? Correct, yeah. and it's it done on a single bezel, so it's yeah. really not easy. Um, My God, yeah. yeah, I really love this watch. Awesome. Then we move on to the second piece. This is a rather special one. Yeah, the yeah. sketch one. Yeah. So I think the mm. idea around this um, is so so smart. Mm. Um, it's. You know the the idea of the celebrating the tenth anniversary of yeah. the, the Octo Finissimo with using uh, Fabrizio's original sketch design. Yeah, I mean, design. Oh my god, yeah. This, um, you know when they launched this, I was like, oh my god, yeah. this is like crazy personal. Yeah, it, it it works so well. The design works so well because you know the the Finissimo is so ultra thin, so it's like paper. Mm. So it makes sense that you have a sketch down yeah. because it's kind of like paper, right? And it's so light, it feels like paper. It made me also realize that I think the Octo Finissimo is probably one of the best designs in the market for it being a blank canvas. Yeah. You know, and wearing it as a second skin. Um, mm. and it just wears so well and it, you can really express the different artists' collaborations on, on the case, the facets, mm. uh, which you've seen with the, the tattoo, yeah. which I have as well. You know, and, and um, you know, uh, even the Sejima, which you have yeah. as well. So this is the Sejima. <laughs> Good segue. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so I think for me, I, I love what they do, disrupting uh, you know the watch market, the industry with, with something that's I would say something you don't see very com very often. Yeah. That yes. is you know uh, that it's a to me I feel my opinion a, a modern icon, a future icon. Yeah. So it's limited to like what? Poo, I think two hundred pieces, right? Yeah, yeah two hundred pieces. pieces yeah. So yeah. Uh, this is a extremely extremely special watch, and uh, I, I I really love this as well. So the, there is another uh, chronograph that is exactly the same titanium. But of course, it comes with the chronograph sketch as well. Yep, exactly. Okay, so, yeah, exactly. So really, so really this cool. This is a special one. Yeah. Then I think we move on to I think the uh, um, the skeleton eight days, oh, which man. you also yeah. like as well. So uh, yeah, so this is actually uh, one of my favorite watches in the whole Bagari um, catalog as well. Yeah. So uh, this is the newly released um, Bagari Octo Finissimo uh, eight days power reserve uh, skeleton. And uh, I think it's just launched like last year, right? Yeah, or something? last year, uh, last correct. Year. So uh, Note has it already. <laughs> okay, and uh, this is the rose gold variant, which I think is the more beautiful part other than the titanium one. I think both have its beauty, yeah. but I would prefer this one. And I really like the 8 days power reserve yeah, I mean, a meter. Like it's like a speedometer, it's, yeah, if you it's will. speedometer. I mean, this is something that's actually very, very cool because um, the watch itself, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's so in, it's so deppy. It, and we look into the down, right? It's so trippy. Yeah. You know, there's so much depth involved and you can actually see the different finishing of the bridges. Yeah. And the, oh my God, if you look at the second hand, it's like, it's, it's, it's so... It's like floating. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's yeah. trippy. I can yeah. tell you, it's a because, very trippy watch. Because of the, the yeah. brush, the, the sandblasted uh, bridges, yeah. sort of uh, lend itself as a, con a canvas to sort of allow the, the indices, mm. the polished indices uh, and the hands to sort of float. Yeah. 
when you when it hits the light, uh, it, the the daylight, the, the like reflection. Second, yeah, basically. it feels like it's like glass. It's, it's, amazing. it's floating yeah, on it's glass. Amazing. So it's really really cool. I really love this watch. Yeah. Um, and then I think the next one that we will probably talk about is the. Uh, should we talk about this one? Yes. Yeah. I mean, this is the <laughs> banger. This yeah. is the, I would say, uh, the hot horology piece of the of his uh, Bulgari collection. And I mean, I, there's so much to love about this watch. I, I I really really love this because like the front looks great already as it is. I mean, if you look at this watch, yeah. you know, want to explain to people what this is. It's not just an octo. It's an octo finissimo skeleton to beyond yeah. mono pusher. I mean, it's, it's a crazy piece. This is, uh, yeah, just to go um, to, to, to give you some context, this is actually the uh, limited to 50 pieces uh, Bagari Octo Finissimo yep. uh, Skeleton Automatic Tourbillon and Chronograph. So basically, what's so cool about this watch is mm -hmm. that the crown is activated by a push button. The crown cannot be pulled out. Like your normal, oh, you know, adjust, wow. adjustment, you can't actually pull out this crown um, because there, there's, no, um, there's no shaft. It's, it, it's like a bridge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it goes over the peripheral rotor. So if you look at the back of the watch, it's actually you can see this this peripheral rotor here, uh, and wow. that's blocking the crown. I see. So it, they they engineered a, a bridge to go over the peripheral rotor. Wow. So in order for you to activate it, you have to press the 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 bottom pusher in Ooh. order to to set the time. Wow. The top pusher, if you can see, is demarcated by a ridge that uh, like some grooves. This is the mono pusher. Ah, so it's a mono pusher chronograph. Correct, exactly, wow. and it's butter soft, like super duper soft, wow. like like, uh, and and when you look at the back, when I do activate it, like you can see the the animation of the of the uh, the movement is sick, man. Super, super. Yeah, this cool. is sick. No, I mean, Bruno Massa is such a genius. Yeah, he designed like uh, such an artistic watch with so much depth, yet. Hyper technical. I, I can't begin to tell you how happy I, I, I am whenever I wear this watch because you know it's a chronograph and I love yeah. chronographs, right? And it's 7.4 millimeter thick. I mean, like to put that in the context, it's crazy. Exactly. Uh, I can do anything with this watch. You know, I can go out, and get caught in the rain. You know, I don't have to worry about you know the mm. the watch getting you know uh, damaged or anything like yeah. that. And when I wear it, like I I used to wear like thicker watches, uh, chrono other chronographs. When you suddenly switch on to this, mm. it feels like I'm not wearing anything. Yeah, I mean, I can imagine. I, I, I know how titanium um, octofinissimos feel like, and yeah. it's like, it's crazy. Sometimes you just forget about it. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. So it, it, this is really cool. And then of My course, God. I think the last one is uh, something very cool, very, very subtle. Yes. Uh, it's the Salmon Dow US edition. Um, wow, it's an Octo Finissimo S. Uh, it's called Tuscan Copper. Tuscan Copper, which yeah. is a US only edition, right? Yes, correct. Yeah. Correct. So I had to really call in a few favors for this. Oh my god, the Dow is insanely beautiful. I, it's, I it's like a pink, champagne, yeah. salmon y kind of a Dow. Exactly. It is more, yeah. I would say, more um, more true to the salmon Dow. Mm -hmm. um, some salmon Dows today can be more honey, more honeycomb yeah. or more copper, uh, whereas this feels a bit more pink. Uh, which is Ooh. which is beautiful and and it, it sort of really ties into the the overall yeah. and aesthetic of, of of the watch. We always talk about you know collecting. Um, you're always trying to go for the deep cuts. Mm. You're always trying to go for something that's not usual, right? Um, so for me, this is this is like yeah, cherry insane. on the cake. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's fantastic. I mean with auto finish more as the S case is insanely beautiful. Yeah, brush and satin finish, but with this dial, it does just pops, man. I think I gotta add one thing. I think you also have the uh, the Octo Yeah, I do. Finissimo yes, the original with the matte black the, dial. Yeah, the matte black dial, yeah. right? What I really love about it is when they launched that, they they did something that you don't typically see from brands. Where um, before that they didn't have an S. The S basically stands for sports. Yeah. So you can actually uh, swim with the watch. Hundred meters water resistance. Exactly. With a screw it's down a screw down crown. crown. And, exactly. and yet. 6.4 mm in thickness. Correct. It's so insane, yeah. it's only one mm thicker than the the predecessors, yes. um, the titanium, and yeah. they made it cheaper with more, um, I would say, and versatility, and pr practicality. Right? Yeah, and yeah. finishing. Yeah. yeah, you know, you, watch collectors love case finishing, mm. uh, 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 bracelet finishing, and all subtle details, and which I think the S really brings a lot to the fore. Yeah, uh, you get a lot more value. I feel. And I think it, that comes back to my collecting philosophy. Mm. You want to go after good value. Yes. You know, you don't want to pay ridiculous premiums. You don't want to 
play bundling games. You know, you don't have to, you know, buy unnecessary as unnecessary mm. things. Uh, for me, you. If you want something, you go and buy it. Yeah. Right. I think what Nope's point out is something that is, uh, I think, very, um, very uh, priceless. I think that you should always try to um, uh, buy what you believe in, and also buy what you like, and also end of the day, um, find the value in things that you like. Right. Yeah. So value not doesn't always translate to monetary value. Sometimes values are like this, you know, um, elegance, beauty, and uh, of course, a person that actually loves and appreciate the brand. I yeah. think that is something that's super important. For me, I feel that collecting, you need to wear the watches, you need to enjoy the watches. Yes. Um, I mean, this is my own personal opinion. Mm. Um, I don't believe in buying watches to keep them in safes. Yep. Or, you know, me too, to, I don't yeah. do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, Guys, I, please do not buy watches and put them in the safe, okay? Yeah. They deserve risk time, they are your babies, they should. They deserve some love as well, right? Yeah, do you exactly, agree? exactly, exactly. <laughs> no, yeah. If you get, you get yeah. scuffed, then so be it, right? Yeah. Buy what you love, buy what makes you happy, buy what can live up, uh, upkeep to your your lifestyle. All these watches, I absolutely love them to death. Yeah. Um, and I think more people should do that. I think the, the part that we see nowadays, the strange thing that happens, especially in the last few years, especially during COVID, was you know an explosion of demand and interest in, mm. in watches as yeah. a alternate alternative asset class where people are buying purely for speculation for you know to make a quick buck or mm. they may not necessarily like the like watches, the watch, yeah. exactly. It's mm. just like, oh, I, 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 I can get two. I'll get two. You know, what I mean, makes oh, no sense man, to me. Right? I, I can tell you the frustration that I have sometimes on this. Exactly. Uh, these people. The good news is right now with the market sort of correcting itself, if you will, um, we're seeing a lot of you know um, uh, prices coming back down yeah. to, are oh, they more realistic levels? People who have just got into this collecting uh, hobby. You know, thinking you know they can buy a watch at retail and they'll somehow you know uh, make money in five years' time. Um, they will, you know, it's it's. I'm not saying it's a definite, but mm -hmm. there's a high risk of them yeah. having a rude awakening when they you know need to let go for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, and I think it's something that uh, maybe the social media has sort of painted the wrong picture mm. uh, in making people think that you know it's it's safe. Yeah. You know, uh, you have been uh, very generous in sharing your advice to you know, for the newer collectors and even some seasoned collectors. You know, these things, um, this experience that we have might be able to help you. So, uh, you know, I'm um, very thankful for you to share your experience and of course share your beautiful, beautiful watches with us. So this is it guys. Uh, I want to give a big thank you to my dear friend Nope to share his amazing experience and also to show us some kick-ass watches. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy this series. Stay tuned for the next one. Mm -hmm.